Welcome to part two of our Google Form videos for Mr. Long Teacher Tips. And in our first video, we looked at how we created our, our first Google Form, which is a nice little thing for quizzes or for surveys. Um, we're going to look at a few more features with the Google Forms. And so let's go into it. So first of all, if you've got your Google Drive and you've already created your Google Form, this is also a good example of how you can get to that form to go edit it. So there's my Google Form that we created in the previous video. You can just right click on it and you can open it with Google Forms. And now we are in the place where we can actually edit this particular document. So there we go. So we added a whole bunch of options. I'm going to go to the bottom again and I'm going to add a new question here at the bottom. It didn't actually add it at the bottom, it added it at the top. So you can actually, just a little tip, you can actually drag it down to where you want it to be. So you can reorganize your Google Form with the questions. You can actually, maybe I want to move that. So by just clicking on there, you can actually move your questions around. But here we go to this question over here. And I want to look at these options. So maybe you want the student to be able to upload a file. So we can say File Upload. And then we just click on Continue to go do the settings. So we can say, please upload uh, a photo of your ID. So we can do that. And by doing that, so we can say what the type of files, if we want, maybe we want it to be an image file, just we can specify an image or PDF. Maybe that's what we want. Maximum number of files, we can specify that. We can say the size of the files. So it gives us a few options that are available to us. So we've got that. So there we go. I'm happy with that. So there's my details for that specific file upload. There we go. And now let's go add another one. Boom. And now we're going to add these ones over here. So yeah, we, these are quite new ones. So for example, if you've got a question which is on a scale, on a linear scale, so especially for opinions, like on a scale from one to five, how do you feel? So like um, if we, let's try one, let's go. So maybe we want a question like uh, on a scale of one to and you can specify from one to five or one to four or one to ten you can do that so we can do one to four i like using even numbers so that people don't just always pick the middle option they have to select either slightly more towards a four or slightly more towards a one on a scale of one to four how excited are you about this camp Hopefully they say all they're all excited. And then you can specify what a one means. And you can say um not very excited. And number four is extremely excited. So you can give it nice little values for what a one means and what a four means. So that's a linear scale. And let's go add another option over here. You can see there what it looks like. See, that's what the linear scale is going to look like. So they can specify where, where, where on that scale do they feel. It's very nice for opinions where you want to actually have um, values that you can measure, where you can count how many people said four or two or so. And so let's look at the next option, a multiple choice grid. Okay, so this is a multiple choice grid. This is when you've got lots of multiple choice questions which tend to have the same answers. And so instead of just having lots of the same question again and again, you can actually specify what your questions are over here and then your options for the answers over there. So um, which of the following foods do you enjoy? Okay, so we can say uh, breakfast, uh, and then we can say, oh no, let's, let's actually specify food, like seafood. Um, and we can say uh, meat, vegetables, veggie tables, uh, carb, carbs. I don't know how to spell carbohydrates, but there we go. So there, those are, let's go, for, let's go fruit and vegetables, fruit. Let's go fruit. There we go. So we've got five rows and now here are the options. So do you, if, oh, which of the funny foods do you enjoy? Um, we can say yes for an option. We can say no and we can say maybe. Okay. So we've got three options over there. Okay. So what happens is it's going to look something like this. So the students can go, ah, uh, yes, I do like seafood. No, not to meat. Uh, yes to, to vegetables. Yes to carbs. Uh, maybe for fruit. So it's, it's particularly useful when you've got the same possible answers. 
and you've got lots of questions to ask for those same answers, then a, a multiple choice grid is ideal. Now, if you want them to be, there's a chance that they could select a whole bunch of options. Like they could say this one and this one and this one. Then you want to use a multiple choice or checkbox grid, not the multiple choice grid, but checkbox grid. It's exactly the same concept, but they are allowed to select more than one option. So um, on uh, which days do you need meals? So uh, we can say, okay, on speaking of, let's say it's on a Friday and we've got a Saturday and we've got a Sunday. And the first option is, do they want breakfast? Do they want lunch? Or do they want supper? So this option is slightly different because if I go to another question, you can see, so in this case, they can say, yes, I want a breakfast, lunch, and supper for Friday, but only a breakfast for Saturday, and only a breakfast and lunch for Sunday. So it's slightly different to the multiple choice where they can only select one option. Yeah, they can select multiple options. So there we go. So those are the, all of the different questions that we've gone through. Um, I'm just gonna show you what these little sections can look like. So if I come over here, I can come right up here. Let's go to this question Yeah, Let's go yeah, and we wanna add in a section break so there we go it added a whole section we can add a new title this is um, other questions you can have another description so this is like another section of it this will create a almost like a separate page and and so on so you can actually and also over here we can let's say we can actually put in another title so you can actually put in a little title here uh, please continue with the questions, okay. It's a terrible place you put a little little gap, but this is will still be on the same page. But you can break up your questions into different sections on the same page, and this section will actually make a brand new page. So let's go have a look at what it looks like. So we're going to click on this little preview, and this is what it looks like. So we can see it's already put in our uh, our if it's Mr. Long, if it's, it's registered the 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 email address so you can see all our questions over there so you can see we're going through and there is our title that we had in the middle see we're still on the same page but it had a nice little break if you want to add more instructions and so on so you can do that and you notice those other questions that we had so, so here's the the file if we want to add a file so we've got that option if you want to upload a file but all those other questions that we did they're on another section so we can go next to go to the next part of the question and so yeah, we can say, okay, oh, we're supposed to we were supposed to put this in. We're supposed to put the required fields in, Mr. Long. So there we go. So those required fields are in. Now we can move to the next section. And if I move to the next section, this is the next part. Then other questions. And this is what the scale looks like, the linear scale. Yeah, we've got the multiple choice grid. And yeah, we've got the checkbox grid. Okay. So there you can see what the questions are. And this is a random question we should have deleted. But there we go. And that's the submit button if they want to submit the data. Okay, so now you've seen what the different options look like. And uh, so that's how you can create your Google Form. So now you've got enough information to be able to create a really nice Google Form. So go make one. For the other videos in the series on Google Forms, go to our YouTube channel. There's the link. Click on the subscribe button. Leave a like. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear what videos you want us to make. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.